So hi, welcome to End Credit Reviews. On an episode of After the Credits on End Credit Reviews, it's Tyler this time from End Credit Reviews, and this is my review on Mortal Kombat Legend Scorpion's Revenge. Now, this is the first Mortal Kombat movie that's at least animated for the first time in decades. The previous one was from back in the 1990s, which was really schlocky and just terrible all around. And anyways, so Mortal Kombat Legend Scorpion's Revenge is of course about Scorpion, who is voiced by Patrick Sol finds out that his family and his clan have been slain by the hands of Lin Kuei shortly after he gets killed and swears revenge on not just Lin Kuei but also Sub-Zero who is voiced by Steve Bloom. He makes a deal with the sorcerer Quan Chi voiced by Daryl D. Paul. In exchange, he's going to get a certain MacGuffin that is available at this tournament that Shang Sun is hosting for the recent Mortal Kombat tournament. Now this movie of course is another reboot where it takes place during the first Mortal Kombat video game and sort of does tie into at least the design of the characters, does tie into the more rebooted Mortal Kombat era timeline back in 2011 and this was really good. I was just surprised. I mean, I was guessing this was going to be kind of just average in that, especially compared to Superman Red Sun, where that movie was just riddled with so many questionable choices and other sorts of what were they thinking moments, but this one was really good. Everything from not just like the violence in the movie where I was just so surprised at what they were able to get away with. I know it's rated R, but still, just how graphic everything was. And I know there's a lot of violence in movies nowadays, but this is one of the first movies in quite some time where I saw the violence in a movie and it really felt like I could feel like the, oh, oh that's gotta hurt. And it's not just because they do some of the x-ray moves that you see in the recent Mortal Kombat games, but just the creative kills. It just makes you kind of just in shock and awe just looking at the carnage of everything so i gotta really tip my hat off to the people who decided to include this and the animators who were able to just pull this off and also the story is pretty good too i did like the character of scorpion i did empathize with him a lot with trying to avenge the death of his family and also how he's trying to teach his son showing how the scorpion is someone who despite being outnumbered is someone who's gonna just keep on fighting no matter what and i liked that how that tied to his personality and why he decided to name himself Scorpion. One of the antagonists of the movie, who's voiced by Steve Bloom, voices Sub-Zero, and this is a veteran voice actor that I've had the honor of meeting in person years ago at WizardCon. This guy has voiced characters such as Wolverine and Wolverine the X-Men, as well as the Green Goblin and the Spectacular Spider-Man, and he is a very down-to-earth cool guy and an extremely talented voice actor at that. And then there's some other voice actors in here that are not necessarily veteran voice actors like him or even Gray Griffin who voices Katana in this movie just briefly but we have Jennifer Carpenter as Sonya Blade and I think she did a very good job of voicing that character as well as uh, Joe McHale surprisingly as Johnny Cage. I wasn't so sure about it because honestly I don't think Joe McHale's really that good of an actor. I mean he has his funny moments and a lot of that was because of the Soup series that was on back in the 2000s. I remember watching that but I think he was really good as one-liners. I don't know if they were improv or written but they were generally funny I know there's one-liners throughout the movie kind of like the 90s but then again the source material is from the 1990s and I kind of miss those kind of one-liners from that time period and in a way it was kind of like yeah you know it's Mortal Kombat it's over the top violence it's gonna be fun and gruesome so you know what you're getting into with this one I also really like the animation design it did remind me a little bit of kind of the Batman and Jackie Chan adventures and I wasn't so sure about the whole like dark lines on people's knuckles a bit that was kind of distracting to me and they kind of looked like tattoos at one point but I did like the sheer size and design of not just Goro but also Shang Tsung in the movie I think he they did a great job of just designing that character and I also really like all the various cameos from various other either Mortal Kombat characters that we would see in the franchise later on some that are very well known like Baraka and Reptile and other ones that are not very well known I forget her name 
but she was like the vampire character from like Deception or Deadly Alliance, I forget which one it was from the 2000s. But I gotta say this movie really started off the ground running in a positive way when we see the intro of Daffy Duck kind of doing shenanigans with a Warner Brothers logo and then Scorpion like comes out of nowhere is like, get over here! I, I love that. I was like, okay, we are in for something really good. Okay, so the problems I have with this movie was that for one, I felt like the members of the Black Clan, the henchmen of Kano, kind of felt like they were just there and not necessarily that needed to be in the movie. But to be fair, they weren't as wasted as the Knights of Ren and the Rise of Skywalker. Second would be I felt like the whole connection between Liu Kang and also Katana felt a little bit rushed compared to the 2011 video game reboot of Mortal Kombat. And finally, I think in the third act of the movie, all right, spoilers, I should tell you, fast forward to this part if you don't want to be spoiled about the movie, but anyway, my biggest criticisms of the movie comes in the third act when Liu Kang is about to be defeated by Goro and then Scorpion, like, pretty much rips Goro's skull out of his body and his, like, skin is just there. It, it's just great. It's just glorious just seeing how graphic they were able to, how much they were able to get away with. But at the same time, I felt like there was a complete ex machina moment. I felt like Liu Kang should have earned that. And also, I was kind of disappointed they didn't have Liu Kang fight Shang Tsung. He was just there as the host and not necessarily the actual champion to be defeated. But yeah, aside from that, I really liked how, you know, Scorpion did get his revenge on Quan Chi as it's revealed in the movie later on that it was he who disguised himself as Sub-Zero to trick the Lin Kuei to doing his bidding so he would kill Scorpion's family and he would kill Scorpion to trick him into becoming his servant. So I really loved that whole final battle between the two of them and also I did love how he just, just the way he just completely annihilated him, no pun intended, but I just loved that he just finished him with the whole like flame effect that was awesome and there's various other easter eggs that some people may be able to get with this one if they're a fan of the franchise but so Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge is definitely a really surprisingly good movie I just really like this one a good amount and yeah there are some issues in the third act of the movie that I had but honestly this is easily the best Mortal Kombat movie that I've seen I mean I do enjoy the 1995 Mortal Kombat movie in a certain way where it's kind of a guilty play Pleasure. and Mortal Kombat Annihilation in retrospect is kind of a so bad it's good movie it's it's kind of hilarious and just certain scenes and how they were done it's kind of like the room but heavy in special effects so as for Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge I would give it about three stars out of four so anyway this is Tyler from Encoder Reviews and I hope you enjoyed this episode of After the Credits on Encoder Reviews and I hope to make a lot more in the future please like and subscribe